Hey guys, Raven Self here, back with another episode of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. So last time we ended up following Naho into Heavenly Host Elementary School. And we got separated from her. So let's uh This is like a dump. Anything to even look at in here? Doesn't look like it. Alright. Um, oh, there we go. Um, uh, let's see, where do we want to head? Oh, great. Is it bathrooms? Well, things seem to happen in the girls' bathrooms, so, uh, let's head that way. What am I? Where am I? What am I? Am I hearing things? That's a child's voice, isn't it? Maybe this is really an elementary school after all. That is creepy. I almost don't want to look. Oh, I can't even look. Doesn't even move around. Okay, so we're heading this way. Yeah, the lights, the lights flickered. I can swear I saw something on the path ahead. Probably just my eyes playing trick on tricks on me, right? I don't see anything there. That's scary. Um, is somebody there? <gasps> oh. Ah! Ah! <gasps> Ooh. Yikes. Well, let's keep going. Is this a bathroom? I'm like, I'm in like a cave and there's a bathroom here? No matter how I looked at it, nothing about this place seemed like an elementary school in any way. But there were lights on the ceiling and support beams prevent cave-ins, so it certainly wasn't a naturally formed cavern either. Looks kind of like a mine shaft to me. Do old buildings in Japan have basements like this? I guess I could see that. I don't know much about Japanese architecture from this era or any other. I mean, there were even indoor, there is even indoor plumbing down here. Oh. Hi, hi little skeleton. Child. Hi. Uh, no thank you. I actually did have to go, but there was a limit to how dirty and disgusting a bathroom stall can get before I just refused to close myself in there. They just pee in a corner. That's just my thing with these series is how squeamish these people are to use these bathrooms or to just go pee in a corner. If I were locked in a horror landscape like this, I'd want to... I wouldn't care where I peed. You know, just as long as there was no way that anything could sneak up on me while I was doing it. Because, honestly, <laughs> being squeamish in a situation like this is the worst thing you can do. I guess I just have to hold it. Hi, little skeleton. I'm gonna keep going. Bye. Doste. Doste. Doskete. I hear the voices of children who seem to be in pain or distress. I did a really good job recording these voices because it sounds like they are all around me. Do 
してどうして助けて助けて痛いよもうやめてどうしてどうして助けて Oh. Oh, death room. That sounds fun. Let's just let's get away from here. This is this is creeping me out. Bomb out、oh, the bomb shelter. I'm guessing World War II. Or, yeah. I can hear children calling for me, hiding and goading me to find them. I'm scared. <laughs> This is gonna be bad. Wait, why can I? Oh, wait, that makes any sense. Never mind. I think I'm going the right way. I could hear the voices of children playing. I'm scared of what these children are gonna do to me. Body pool? No more! I think I've heard this song before. It sounds familiar. God, what is this place? Where even am I? In the worst place possible. <laughs> I can hear children laughing. Among the voices, I heard the sound of a door opening somewhere nearby. Let's leave. Um, I'm gonna say really quick. Stop it! <laughs> That's really scary. It sounds like they're running around me. This is, this is terrifying. Okay, we saved. Let's go to the death room. What the hell? I just saved. If I die, then. I didn't think this place could get any darker, but this room proved me wrong. It was completely and utterly devoid of all light. My only indication as to its size was the bloop, bloop sound of dripping water from somewhere inside. And based on the echo, it didn't seem too big. I was perfectly content to leave it at that, honestly, but I couldn't, because I knew Naho might have been in there, seized with fear and panic. She usually kept a cool head, sure, but I'd just seen what she looked like when she didn't, and it worried the hell out of me, so I had to know. Naho! No response. Not that I heard, anyway. That dripping wasn't very loud, but it echoed enough that it could conceivably obscure the, obscure the sound of a person's voice. As long as I kept the door to this room open, though, the pale light of the corridor would filter in, and I'd be able to see the exit. I may not have illuminated much, but at least I'd be able to find my way in a pinch. So I swallowed my fear and walked into the darkness. Ugh, gross. And what's that smell? It stinks to high heaven. Is something rotting in here? Ugh. Ew, what's spilled? It's all over my leg. Without thinking, I smacked my hand against my leg, as if trying to knock off whatever was stuck to it. Let me check, this is really sick. Oh, yay! 
Sorry, my boyfriend is at a tournament on campus right now. And I guess he made it to the semifinals. Woohoo! The video game tournament. Anyways, without thinking, I smacked my leg, hand against my leg, as if trying to knock off whatever was stuck to it. Ugh. What is this? The metallic smell is so thick that I almost couldn't breathe. Was it blood? Did I just wipe blood out of my hand? No, it couldn't be. Ugh. I got a sudden itch on my leg, so I impulsively reached down and scratched it. And in doing so, a small rice-sized bead stuck to the ball of my finger. But in this all-consuming darkness, I had no way to tell what it was. Rice-sized bead. It felt an awful lot like a grain of rice, though. Even smushy and smear like one when I kneaded it between my thumb and forefinger. What is this thing? Skin from my thigh? Crap. I hope not. Uh, uh. Huh? The lights? <gasps> oh, God. What is this place? The source of the horrible smell was suddenly clear. The room was absolutely drenched from wall to wall and ceiling to floor with blood and human viscera. The hell is viscera? I'm I know that word, but I'm trying to think of what it means. Maybe it just means human fluids. Um, how many gallons of blood must have been, must there have been to coat this entire room? That is a lot of freaking blood. And the worst part was, none of it was dry. It was all wet. It was all fresh. There were indistinguishable chunks of flesh and bone everywhere. That just, just what kinds of twisted things was this room being used for? Ah, uh, huh? I scratched my itching thigh again with my finger, then looked down at my legs, and all at once, my blood ran cold. What? Huh? Huh? A swarm of little, oh maggots. Little white bugs was were wriggling around on both of my legs. And that's what I'd squished between my fingers, but there were many, many more. And they were also on my skirt, on my socks, even inside of my shoes. Ugh. I fell into a state of total panic. I threw off my shoes and began frantically brushing myself off with my arms. I grabbed the hem of my skirt and the collar of my socks and shook the hell out of them, too trying to knock as many bugs off my body as I possibly could. <laughs> Some later on, I accidentally planted the heel of my sock into a murky puddle of red liquid. My mind went blank with disgust. Gross, 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 gross. I can't take this anymore. Calm down, Sayaka. This is just a slaughterhouse. This was just a place where the livestock was chopped up into meat. It was a perfectly natural. Uh, was perfectly natural. This is where nothing unusual about this room at all. The blood, the chunks of flesh and bone, probably all just from animals. Well, that's understandable if you uh, weren't supposed to be in a high school when there was chanting children. The buckets. Filthy buckets littered the room. Each one was stuffed with reddish black globs of meat and quivering yellow and white liquid. The most of and most of them feet more like bones adorned the surface. But one of them seemed to be far more horrid stew than the others. And it's because one of them was full of arms. Human arms, several of them jutting out above the bucket lip and practically waving at Passover's body. <sighs> screams uh, are strange beasts because they basically override all sense of logic and reason within a person's mind. Quite naturally, quite automatically, in my shock, a force scream forced its way out from inside of my body, from the very pit of my stomach. Ah! I, I, I can't scream. My senses had become razor sharp. I could faintly hear footsteps approaching from the hall outside the door, outside the room. My stomach tightened. Stopping the scream, next scream in my throat. I was sure that in the corridor just outside this room, someone or something was coming this way, and judging by the sound of it, it sure was a Naho. <sighs> Another scream threatened to slip out. I quickly stifled it. The next thing I needed, last thing I needed, was to give away my position. Whoever this was was getting closer and closer. I had to act. 
The hallway outside was just a straight shot, so escaping the room without being seen wasn't an option. Hiding was my only hope. But hiding where? Um, in the cabinet? <sighs> the footsteps were approaching fast. I ran over to the large cabinet on the other side of the room. Please, open. It's hard to really sound scared in that voice. The door opened difficultly, but they were the sort that automatically closes when left unattended. Oh well, no time for second guessing now. I turned around and jammed myself end first into the closet, grabbing the edges of the closet doors with my fingers and pulling them for all my worth. <sighs> Shrinky, shrinking my body into a cramped closet, I prayed silently for the footsteps to pass by this room. But then, the person making those footsteps was probably the same person who turned on the lights in here, so I didn't honestly hold out much hope. Rapidly, my thoughts grew darker. Worst case scenario being flash began flashing through my mind, one after another. I grasped my quivering mouth and violently shaking shoulders in a vain attempt to calm myself down. I clenched my eyes shut and willed myself to swallow any sounds that may otherwise have leaked out. Oh, Naho, please, help me. I peeked through the gap in the door, and my fears were confirmed. I was no longer alone in this room. <laughs> the thing that was in here with me was horrible. He seemed not quite human, but not really anything else either, and whatever he was, I was scared to death of him. On second thought, maybe he was human. He just had a grotesque face and an abnormally large body, not to mention a zombie-like disposition. He was horrifying. <laughs> he had the limp body of a girl tossed over his shoulder. He walked over to the block, the blood-covered table in the center of the room and violently threw her down onto it. Ugh. Oh, is that who I think it is? And out of Mona agony, she came too. My god, she was still alive. Uh, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts! Oh yeah, it is her. The legs have been severed at the thigh, like completely cut off. How could anyone do something like that? No! The man straddled the girl and tied both of her arms into metal restraints attached to the table. No, what was he planning on doing to her? It's coming this way. No, no, please, no. The man passed right by the standing closet, instead turning his attention toward the nearby corner of the room where he began rummaging through a toolbox. He was utterly careless about it, tossing aside any tools he didn't need. Hammers and drills were clanging on the ground, some were sliding under the table. Each time a tool fell, he'd bend down and scoop it up. If I were hidden under that table, I would absolutely would have been found just now. Before long, he pulled out a large sorry about that, pair of pliers. Returning to the girl's side, he once again stepped. Oops. That's what I get for trying to pick up stuff without looking. Woohoo! He's in the finals! Yay! Anyways, where'd my controller go? <laughs> Before long, he pulled out a large pair of pliers. Returning to the girl's side, he once again stepped onto the table and straddled her body. Oh god! Wait, what is he going to do with those exactly? Ah. Wordlessly, the enormous beast clamped down on the girl's squirming girl's cheek and squeezed with all his might. Oh. Then, as far as I was able to determine from my vantage point, he forced her mouth open and shoved the pliers inside. Mm. He readjusted his grip on the handle, then skillfully began opening the two metal prongs while simultaneously pushing them down her throat. No, stop. Finally grasping the girl's- Oh no. Oh no. Girl's tongue with his pliers, the man suddenly yanked his arm upward in one single powerful movement, tearing it from her mouth. It 
heard the sound of her mouth frothing over, and after a moment of scrubbing, all her movements ceased completely. That's when I lost it. Tears were streaming down my face, and I began peeing myself uncontrollably. Do they have a thing for that in this game or something? This first with Yuka, and now with Sayaka, and I'm pretty sure it's happened other times, but I just cannot think of it. Streaming down my face, and I began peeing myself uncontrollably. Urine was pooling along the bottom of the cabinet. No, stop. I frantically contracted my stomach, forcing myself to stop peeing. If any of it leaked out from here and gave my position away, I'd be a goner for sure. <laughs> my stomach immediately fought the sudden denial of the painful cramp. Please, please don't do this now. The man tossed a severed tongue into an aluminum bucket at his feet, then roughly threw the pliers back into the toolbox with an ear-splitting clatter. He grabbed the bucket containing the tongue and slowly disappeared from the room. This is why you pee and not be squeamish about where you pee. Somebody had just died out there. I was in shock. What I'd seen had literally scared the piss out of me. I didn't think that ever actually happened. I had to get out of this room. If I stayed here until he came back and if he found my hiding place, I could easily be the next one to die on that table. Slowly and shakily, I opened the cabinet doors and re-emerged. Oh god. Yeah, that's one way to die. I think the... Yeah, if you sever your tongue, it bleeds out incredibly quickly. The girl was still as a board. She almost looked alive, albeit gravely wounded, but her mannequin-like lack of any emotion whatsoever said it all. I stared at this fresh corpse and just felt so many conflicting emotions welling up inside me. I exited the room, fighting back more screams from the pit of my stomach that seemed insistent on coming out. No, no, what is this place? If I'm dreaming, somebody wake me up, please. But I knew it wasn't a dream. I accepted that this place was real, and even though it differed greatly from any reality I'd ever known before, my brain was quickly nearing its breaking point. A stupefying fog clouded my mind's circuits. No! No! Please, help! Help me, please! I, don't, I lost your voice. God damn it. There it is. Days passed in this sweltering, isolated bunker. I couldn't even say how many. My cell phone battery ran out after a while, and my watch died too. I was lost completely, but I never stopped looking for Naho. I hadn't eaten anything. I hadn't drunk anything. I'd slept so many times I couldn't even begin to estimate how long I'd been trapped here. The chocolate my mom gave me was still in my pocket, but I couldn't bring myself to eat it. It felt like it represented an important bond between me and her. Our friendship will last forever. It will never die. No. Save me. Please. Hmm. <laughs> Yummy. Bitch. Rengoku. Well, that was fun. Chapter 4 Clear. 5 Shangri La chapter is now playable. Is that one going to be any better or is it going to be worse? Ayano Yamamoto. Mako. Unlocked. Yep, save. Yep. Yep. Well, that does it for chapter four. That one was actually, that was actually about perfect. It's 24 minutes. Um, it wasn't that long a chapter, really. Okay, anyways. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll get to see what uh, Shangri-La is all about next time. Anyways, uh, 
like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in another horrifying episode. Bye! So, care to get us started with some choice words for any evil spirits that might be listening? Tremble on the border between this life and the next, under my seven stars. That's what I'm talking about. Those ghosts have got to be shivering in their ethereal booties after hearing something like that. So let's get right to the listener letters, shall we? Here's a scary story from one Junpei Nagi of M City in Tokyo. In my experience, adverse spiritual manifestations from my research have always been easy enough to keep at bay with my powers. A second. This one is different. For this energy to be completely visible on broad daylight, I'd never seen anything like it. Ugh, this is bad. My head is splitting. But the camera was, but the camera's 